In this video, we're going to paint the greatest Horus Heresy Legion, the Sons of Horus. I've been slowly chipping away, literally, at my Sons of Horus army, and uh, it's not much of an army so far, because we have a Contempt of Dreadnought, a Cataphracti Praetor, and Malagurst. So I've done all of these for Patreon, and we added the Dreadnought to the YouTube, so if you haven't seen it already, it's going to go great with this video. But now it's time to paint the troops, and I thought I was really happy with the Contempt video, but it would be great to have a video on how to paint the infantry. So hopefully, as well as a tutorial, it should be the start of my Sons of Horus diary and me actually getting an army done. Sons of Horus are my favourite legion, really just because of the colour. I absolutely love the black and green, and so it's really important to me that I replicate this green. As always, I love to look at these Forge World colour plates. Now, there's some older artwork, and I love this helmet design with the kind of open face grill, and of course, the top knots. So I did as many little kit bashes and things as I could, and I used some Chaos Marines, loads of different heads, and it's just a real mixed bunch. And I'm doing a really big batch of infantry, so we're going to kind of mix it up between some of the Marines at the start, but then I'll focus the demonstrations on one model. The crucial thing in getting Sons of Horus is of course the green, and looking at the colour plates, there's a lot of black in the shadows, and I played around with some other shadow colours, some richer ones, but in the end, I kind of learnt from these that just shading with black was the simple way to go. So the thing with black is, it will desaturate colours, so often you'll hear people go, don't use black for the shadows, but in this case I want to desaturate the green. I don't want it to be particularly vibrant. I want a palish green so the battle damage shows up and you can see there's a lot of light hitting these renders but it's still not particularly vibrant and I just wanted to talk about this as this justifies why I use the colours uh, that I do. So let's go over the colours now. To make things very simple I am using Sons of Horus Green. It is a fantastic paint and I'm going to shade it with some black, so that's the kind of the simplest thing really. Uh, for the highlights, I'm going to use Green Sky, and AK make this and Vallejo do as well. And I like Green Sky because it is powerful green, it's got a lot of tone to it, but it is fairly desaturated. I know a lot of people use Cyberite Green, but for me that is too vibrant, so I mix Green Sky and Sons of Horus together. I've made a mixing pot of this now to make sure it's consistent across the army because it is a mix. I put an entire pot of the Sons of Horus Green in this big mixing pot and then I kept adding Green Sky until I got the tone I wanted and you can adjust this to your taste. So let's look at the colours on the palette now. So on the palette we have the Black and Sons of Horus on the left, some pure Sons of Horus in the middle and then I'm just adding here my mixing pot and you can see compared to the pure green sky it's very different the Sons of Horus adds a lot of blue to it and that's the sort of colour I'm going for so if you look at those three you can see we get enough contrast but you can adjust this to your taste more or less contrast is really down to personal preference so yeah just kind of add more green sky or more black if you want to push those extremes so I get straight into the painting now and I undercoated with black and then I did a airbrush of Tamiya flat white from above but you could just use some grey primer. The zenithal or pre-highlight isn't super important with how I paint this scheme. What is important is you get a really opaque uh, coating of the Sons of Horus green and I like a lighter coat like a grey or a pre-highlight just to make this colour a little paler. But really, I want it super opaque, and I'll get all the shading and highlighting by shading and highlighting with the airbrush. So if they did Sons of Horus in a can, I definitely would be spraying that all over the models. Sons of Horus Green is a fairly translucent colour, which makes it nice to shade, mix with the black later on. But to get it really opaque, it does take a few coats. I think I did three or four thin ones just to get a really smooth, solid covering of this. So 
Spend your time on the airbrushing. This is where we really want to make the green look spot on and actually all the details are going to be so simple. So I spent most of the time airbrushing and getting this green just how I wanted. After that nice clean coat of Sons of Horus, we go to the highlighting and I get my mixing pot and I just spray that directly over the Sons of Horus green. Now, annoyingly, I didn't get loads of good footage of this because usually when I do an airbrushing video on YouTube, I use my micro cup on the airbrush and that means it doesn't get in the way for filming. And that's because I normally do a lot of one-off models and things like that. Now, I've got the huge cup here uh, which I'm not used to using on the airbrush and as you can see kind of covers everything so uh, yeah that was a bit annoying so I was filming this Praetor model and uh, I didn't realize how badly the cup covered that so the best footage I got was actually on this Tartarus Terminator and this has got some really nice shapes for the airbrush if you're wondering how to kind of highlight these models then have a look again at those color plates and it just shows you some really cool places to place these highlights. It's really difficult to get the highlights as fine as you want with the airbrush, so I like to do the highlighting here and then we'll go back to the Sons of Horus screen to slim these highlights down. And it's much easier going that way than trying to get really skinny highlights in the first place. And I think you'll get smoother results as well. For the shadows, you can see me making my mixing pot and I just put a little bit of black into a brand new pot of Sons of Horus green. I'm using an AK one here, but I do recommend you use something like the model air black that I showed in the beginning, as it will airbrush a lot smoother. We don't want a pure black, obviously I could just use a pure black then, so we want this kind of greyish tone, and you can keep making a comparison to an unused pot of Sons of Horus Green to make sure you're getting that level of contrast right. It's a bit of a pain making these mixing pots, I suppose, but really it's worth it if you want to get your colours spot on and consistent. I couldn't find any colours that were straight out of the pot that worked for me and that's the reason I'm doing this and I just wanted to be honest and show you how I've actually gone and painted my army. I'm sure there's a lot of other simpler tutorials out there but I think the end result is worth it and I just wanted to do something different here on the Cult of Paint channel. I airbrushed my entire army in two sessions. So this was kind of the end of session one, just doing the Sons of Horus green and the highlighting. And you can see all of those here and they're looking fantastic at this point. So now we're gonna go in and do two levels of shading and that'll be the airbrushing complete. So you can see I've got my smaller cup on the airbrush and you can actually see the footage this time. So you can see what I was talking about, that the highlights are a little large. So I go for some very diluted Sons of Horus green here, just so it's translucent enough to blend these colors together. So what we're looking to do is make the highlights thinner and also to just blend them in with that Sons of Horus green. I love painting this way. You get wonderful colors. It's easy to get perfect blends because you know, you're using it fairly diluted in the airbrush at this point. This does take some time and some practice, but like I said, just put all the effort into getting the green right and you'll be so rewarded at the end. Here's another nice example with the Tartarus Terminator and you can see that highlight in the center is a little bit broad. So I just come in from either side with this glaze of Sons of Horus and that makes that highlight a little bit thinner. It's more time consuming than just airbrushing some thick highlights but again, I just really wanted this green to look as close to those color plates as possible. And they have very fine highlights with a lot of different colors in a short space. And this is how I was able to achieve that with my airbrush. Now we repeat the process with the darker shade. So the Sons of Horus green kind of blends it all together. And now we're looking to enhance the shadows. And again, those color plates had really dark shadows in places. And that's what we're looking to do now. So I really take my time with this. It's worth noting I am using a 0.2 needle and uh, that just allows me to get them really fine. The problem with a 0.2 needle is that the paint doesn't flow as well, but I'm using them really diluted here, so uh, it works okay. You can do this with a 0.4 for sure, and I do recommend that for army painting. 
I focus mainly on spraying from below and uh, that way I don't touch any of those really nice bright highlights and I'm looking to get a lot of contrast in a short area here so this is the way to do it I think. I think if you do the shadows afterwards it allows you to get a better control of how much shadow is on show. The black by comparison really makes those highlights stand out and I actually really like having the more desaturated green. They do the Lupercal green and that is actually a really rich colour. I think it's yeah too much like a deep jade, too vivid for my taste. So just killing the colours a little bit with the green sky and the black is definitely my preference. After I'm happy with the green I apply gloss varnish all over and I do the transfer process. We've covered this plenty of times before, so please check out our other videos if you want to make your transfers look absolutely perfect. Then I go ahead and do probably the worst stage, which is to hand paint all the areas black. And this takes me around half hour per model, and uh, I've got 40 models to paint the black on, so yeah, this was definitely the least enjoyable part. The good news is when you get to this point you are on relative easy street and it's really fun to finish these models. We're going to start with battle damage which I think is one of the most important things about painting things for the Horus Heresy and I love this scale artist Burnt Umber right now for battle damage. It's a fairly rich brown on the palette but it dries really matte and is just a wonderful cold brown for chips. So I grab a detail brush and I start with leading edges like on the end of this knee that's definitely going to have some chipping on. So I start by battle damaging all of these parts that stick out before I do some kind of random chips in, uh, in the free space. So here I'm working on this elbow and it's kind of almost like edge highlighting but I also add some little scratches and dots. Really take your time with this and enjoy it. I think it's really fun and uh, we're not doing edge highlighting or a lot of detail so putting the weathering in is what makes a difference on these models. I think when you have these wonderful transitions like on the back of the leg here and then lots of little chips and things it just looks really cool uh, so yeah I love this step just take your time try not to overdo it and uh, make it look random. You don't really need to recess shade because we did so well with the airbrushing doing that shadowing. Here you can see me do a little bit in the knee here with the shadow colour we made but for the most part you don't really need it and later we'll be using some oil paints uh, to do some weathering and that can go into the recesses. But if you want to you can use that uh, shadow paint that we've made. I block in all of the silver parts with Iron Warriors. I don't spend a lot of time highlighting the black but I do give it a subtle highlight with scale 75 eclipse grey and I love this grey because it's super matte and it just has a nice subtle tone to it. You can add further highlights if you want, I used Mechanicus standard grey and this has a top knot so I added a little bit of white to that and just pushed the highlights to make it look like a shiny black. But I wouldn't spend forever highlighting, I quite like the black to be subtle and the Eclipse Grey in my opinion is almost enough. Any gold areas I base coat with Decayed Metal and I highlight them with Peridot Alchemy. Some of your marines will have them and some of them won't. I think some of the Sons of Horus should have some gold parts and yeah I just keep it really simple. Uh, if you add any of those coins or skulls then I would do uh, this the same. I go back to my battle damage now and I just need any silver a little bit brighter than Iron Warriors so I mix chrome into Iron Warriors because that's all I have but you basically want a medium silver and here you can highlight the silver parts as well as damage the black parts but also in some areas where you have the brown chipping you can make it really worn through and add some little bits of silver here. So it's nice to have a couple different levels of chipping, the brown to represent old ones and then uh, silver for sort of brand new fresh ones. And it looks really good here on the elbow actually. I quickly highlight some of the key areas like these rivets. Again I would let the metallics do the work so I do think Iron Warriors and then one more highlight is more than enough. As they're baddies I go for red eyes and I base coat with blood red from AK. 
I highlight with Deep Orange from AK, and this is an intense colour from their range, so the coverage is good, which when it comes to orange is obviously tricky to find. And then I just add some golden yellow from Vallejo, and again, this just has fantastic coverage, even for a yellow. We're almost finished, but we have a really key step to getting the look I want, and that's adding oil paints. I'm using Raw Umber from Windsor & Newton here, and this is a fairly cold brown as opposed to something like Burnt Umber, which is a little bit warmer. I've got those fancy trays now, so I can look really cool like Henry, and I'm going to thin this with some Sans Odor, which as you can see, I got a bargain, £1.50 off. And I'm going to start off with a very diluted filter of this. So I add a lot of thinner and I'm using an old brush here. Uh, so don't worry if you see me using my fancy brushes for oils. The tip on this brush is uh, long gone. I carefully add this light filter all over the model. I kind of focus on the recesses, but it will go over the surface. And then I let this dry before I go to adding some thicker layers of oil. At the moment of filming, it's uh, really hot, so my oil paints are drying pretty damn quick. I thicken up and turn it into more of a wash, and this is fantastic for it clinging around things like the rivets, which are quite hard to uh, you know, normally get a neat wash around, but the oils make it so good, and when they dry, it looks so natural. So I really think oils are an essential part of getting this look. I also add some drips with the oil paint, so I use a slightly thicker paint and I just carefully run them down here. I think on the infantry you shouldn't really have too many drips, but one or two does look pretty cool, but I save this more for things like vehicles. Check out the Contempt to Dreadnought video and I use these uh, a lot more. I tested doing this oil wash in the early stages. You can see this marine has just had the green spray, but the oil looks so good over the metallics and the black that I do think it's better off at the end. I just, you know, you can paint the black really simply and the same with the silvers and a little oil wash just adds some dirt into the recesses. and I think it's best saved till last. I sand up my base with some kind of smashed up concrete I've got laying around but I make sure I don't get any uh, big rocks on there any fine sand will do. I then wash the sand with grey brown from AK and I also add a little bit of a darker brown by adding some burnt umber to uh, that warm grey but you don't need to do much here just as long as you tint the sand a little bit uh, I think it looks great. It's taken me a while to settle on a scheme for my bases, but I'm ending up with this light sienna from Vallejo. So the warm grey and the light sienna, that's what I'm going for. So it's quite a yellowish colour, but not super yellow, you know. And I want to just put these powders on dry, and I'm personally not going to fix them because I prefer the look when you just put them on. As long as you're careful to really get them in the recesses, you know, work the brush in there, uh, they shouldn't come off and I think they look better when they're nice and dry. So here we have our finished marine and uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I think there's a lot of effort that goes into getting that green right, quite a few steps to the airbrushing, uh, making the mixing pots, but after that, hopefully you agree, all the steps are really simple, you know, it's just one or two steps and for me that's army painting. It is worth putting time into the green because that's what makes Sons of Horus. I want to look at those shoulder pads and the helmet. I think, yeah, that green was worth it. I love the tone. I think the contrast is really, really cool. And it's just so fun to do the weathering after I've done that step. I think I've managed to match my Contempt to Dreadnought, which I spent a lot of time on really well. I did a lot of extra brush work on that. Uh, so I was worried I wouldn't quite match it and I didn't want to do all the brushwork on the troops but I'm really happy with my scheme now. It doesn't quite match uh, Malagurst and I think that's because Malagurst needs the filter, the oil wash, and that should make it match. But I'm really happy with my Cataphracty Praetor and everything so yeah, really, now I'm happy with the characters and the vehicles, I just need to get on with it and get the rest of these infantry done. 
I matched the basing to my World Eaters Contemptor that I painted for Patreon, and I really like the idea of maybe having a late heresy themed World Eaters and Sons of Horus force joined together. Probably Sons of Horus with a detachment of World Eaters, but man, I am loving painting Horus Heresy. So my army right now is, uh, yeah, a long way to go. I've just been slowly painting the black, which I said is the worst stage of the Sons of Horus. It takes me half an hour just to paint the black. So what I've been doing is one a day and I've painted the black on 10 so far. So there's 30 left to go. Hopefully in 30 days, I finish painting all of the black and uh, actually, it was really cool finishing one marine, which is probably something I wouldn't have done if I wasn't making a video for you guys. But now I know after the black, it's a breeze and the end result is totally worth it. So it's been really nice for me to uh, yeah, get that motivation to finish the, uh, the project. Because we want our content to be nice and varied, I can't really afford to take uh, a month or two off and finish this army. So I think just painting the black on one a day and then maybe I'll do, you know, a step a week, like the battle damage one week, uh, the eyes the next week, and eventually they will get done. Uh, but yeah, I just want to keep bringing a, a variety of content for you guys. I don't think you want to see me paint a Sons of Horus Tactical Marine every single week. So yeah, I'm sure some of you who use this tutorial will finish your armies before me, but... I will hopefully get there eventually. I'm determined to finish this army because a lot of my friends are painting fantastic heresy armies and I do actually want to play a game with them one day. I hope you enjoyed this video and you like the results. Uh, hopefully you can feel my passion for the Sons of Horus. I absolutely love them. If you did enjoy the video, the best way to support us is to spread the videos around, show them to your friends. And also we do have a Patreon and I'm on there most weeks trying to do uh, some really in-depth tutorials. So the latest one I did was the World Eaters Contemptor, and that's over an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, so I really go to depth in that one. Tried to find the right balance in this video of explaining everything, but also just getting through those details. Anyway, looking forward to your comments, and uh, yeah, see you soon in the next one.